welcome back to our short little series that we're doing about getting the Reality XP GTN as well as GNS devices installed into, into planes. And then also flying them with those to really show how having that extra integration is really, really nice. If we jump inside, we can see that yes, our MFD does have a 430. Don't know if it's possible to replace the in-panel unit. If this is something that's interesting, leave something in the comments and I can always look into how for the V35 you could potentially move stuff. The benefit of taking off the knobs is actually pretty big. I know in some of the others, because the 3D knobs can't be removed, you can replace gauges, but then you end up with them sitting on top. The primary reason for wanting to do all this is we have hard panel units installed inside of our physical cockpit. Previously, you saw how we added the GTN 750 to the system. I'm gonna show how you add the GNS 530, but as a number two unit. I use the 530 to be my comm and nav radio number two and configure it to be a GPS number two. And again, this is where we will be adding our little value add because one could say, well, what's the point? I could just buy the aircraft can't I? Can't I just buy the GTN, install it, and it's done? The answer to that is yes and no, because unfortunately, what I learned the hard way, hence why I'm doing this in an aircraft that I haven't done it to, you get a little bit more functionality when you're replacing the GPS units that are in the dash. Some of the things are slightly missing, or the other thing to consider is that the 530 and 750 combo wasn't put together because Reality XP doesn't have an installer that's expecting the two. You're running these as the separate plugins. So here I want to do this as a pop out because we're going to then drag it down into our extra monitor. Configuration. I want this pop out to have one window and that is going to be my 530. Now, if you're asking questions like, what's the different versions? Again, I didn't buy the 400 series, so I couldn't install one. It'll just be black. I don't have the license for that. A GPS 500 has no nav or comm radios. It is just the GPS navigator, similar to the stock FSX one. The GNS 530, now this is your comm nav radio, and that's like the most common there is. This one, we're going to go with lower right is where it's gonna come on. Half scale is fine. And this is the point where it would be nice to be able to say, but you're going to be GPS number two. I want you to be the secondary unit. It doesn't have an option for that, nor does it have an option for us to flag that I want this with no bezel. Those are the points where I say, you gotta then do a little bit of stuff yourself. Would be awesome, but they don't have the functional feature. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to accept this. As you can see, it's now relaunching the navigation items. It just reloaded the aircraft. You see the aircraft reload, in it comes. So when we look at our instrument panel, we now have a GTN and a GNS. Now sometimes I find I need to kind of reload it again. Don't know why the panels pop open and are visible. As you can see, not so far. So we don't see our panels, so let's go. We're gonna reload our aircraft. There we go. Now we've got our panels coming up. Right off the bat, you can see again, we're back to the same problem we had before, where our outer shell has the bezel around it. But there's actually two parts to this, which is technically right now, this enter button should be controlling that unit. This guy, same thing, hold down the shift, right click to bring up the settings. You'll notice this is GNS 531. Connect GPS to autopilot, connect GPS to, to HSI. You'll notice it is not the master device. Uh, similar type device options as we saw before. Now, radios, right now it's set to be comm nav one. 
So normally you would think, oh, that's okay. I'm going to make this nav 2. Uh, and I'll force this to be nav 2 as well. No problem. Avionics on. Uh, power knob switch is volume only. Uh, audio settings. We want that. We'll make this one be the male. Give it, uh, I don't know, 60. When you get in your terrain, it'll... And again, same thing, not with focus. So here, we want to use simulator GPS commands. And then in our AFMS settings, uh, GPS selected. So instead of prompting us, telling us we have to change modes, this will do it auto. Uh, and then you can do comm presets, where it will automatically set your comms. We're going to set that, keep it as disabled. Uh, and we are going to leave uh, the CDI key while well, it's enabled, so that's good. Selected courses, all that's enabled. Um, we could say selected course uh, for GPS could be disabled so that you can manually adjust the course. Um, or just let it be enabled Enabled for VLOC as well, VFLEC. So it needs to restart that unit. Of course, I'm pressing my enter button, nothing's going to happen. So now what you're going to see is... All of a sudden, this knob is controlling both units and, of course, doing something different in each one. And, well, that's because they are different. The behaviors are supposed to be different. But the 530, even though I've made it NAV2, COM2, we know that NAV2 is functioning correctly. What's not functioning are the controls. This is where the documentation comes in really handy in this documentation and their documentation is actually very well written it tells you what you need to do i sure i'm making my own request one could say which is it would be great if some of these settings just automatically took place there's all these other settings you can do from the gui it's unfortunate they do also include the additional like uh, Garmin gauges, which is nice if you want to add those to your virtual panel. Again, we're doing this without a virtual panel, so we don't care. Checklists, all kind of neat stuff that you can put into the unit. So reading the configuration and the manual is very important. On this step, I did figure this part out on my own. This part wasn't hard for me to get to. I was able to kind of put things together that, okay, it installed the 530 number one unit in the plane. With that, I kind of started to put a little bit of two and two together. Okay, I, I think I know what I'm supposed to do. We're gonna go into our Lockheed Martin folder and we're gonna go to our sim objects and we're gonna go to our airplanes and we're gonna go to our V35. And again, this is the tip tank one, which I find strange they put it in as two separate planes, but. I guess they had to. Here now we've got our GNS, just like we have our GTN entry. What we're going to do here is drag that over so we can see it. This is the information for the GTN. Now, what's going to happen is I actually need these to use the number two, right? We need this to actually be the GNS number two unit. So we're going to change this to number two. And we're going to change this to number two. And we'll change this to true. So that's part of what we need to do. Now, we could just jump back into the sim and I could show you how we could reload the aircraft. For some reason, just reloading the aircraft doesn't always work. Go back to the one, uh, the one item. All right. Not a problem. There we go. Now we got our Garmin uh, unit firing up. Excellent. Look at that. And now we are still controlling that other unit. All right, we're gonna come over. We're gonna shift right click. We're gonna bring up the settings. It is still loading a 531. And all the settings have gone back to blank. That didn't help us. What did we miss? What is it that we missed? And you'll notice, hey, this file's been modified. Another reason why I really, really like Notepad++. It told me that something else has modified this. I'm gonna say yes, 
So it will load in that item. Now what you'll see is it opened this file and it added a whole nother entry for a 531 and all the settings for the number one. And that's because though we modified this, this is just what the settings are and the configuration file the Reality GNS is gonna use for its configuration. We need a little bit more than that. We need to actually now go into the aircraft panel configuration. So we're gonna open this also with Notepad++. And now what we're gonna find out is here's all the entries for the tiles, the windows, and the element. So we need to get down to Windows 6 and Windows 7. So we're gonna move down in the body, the sections, and it'll be after the virtual cockpits because it'll be where it found the space to add the entry for Windows 6 and Windows 7. And if you want, just add a space, make it easier. Windows 6, the first one we did was the 750 and it was supposed to be the dash one. Here, what you can see, this is where it can get pretty interesting. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna change this to a two. And it's ident, we're gonna change it to 1532. That works. Now that we've changed that, we're gonna go control S. Now we have no choice at this point, because we've changed that, we absolutely have to reload the aircraft as well. But we should be done with that file and both files really. We can go ahead and reload the sim object. We're going to completely reload the aircraft again. So the V35B, tip tank, orange, black, because I like the orange and black plane. I think it looks nice. There we go. Now we're in. Now it's giving us our bezelless. So now we have our bezel free. This is now actually loading the piece we want. What's neat about this is as soon as I start using knobs and buttons, what you'll see is when I press this button, now my programming works. This is where the information for when you're setting up and doing your device programming, it is in the manual, but it's a little bit harder to do. When we build one of these panels, and again, this guy is being taken care of by the Real Sim Gear software package, so we don't have to do anything. The plugin for those deals with it. If this was also the Real Sim Gear GNS 530 controller, we would have to go in and modify their config file appropriately. But again, since he did all the work, you're really just telling it that it's the number two. In that case, what happens is the 530 gets told this device, this 530 is not the number one, it's the number two and all the knobs and buttons and switches are reprogrammed. If you're programming this via other software, you'll have to do that programming separately. And it is in the manual. I had a hard time finding it. I was informed that, no, no, it's in the manual, it's this information. So it's not as clear right out of the gate, but kind of once somebody gave you that little push, that little bump, then it makes all the sense in the world. And so when you go into the manual, it does come in and it tells you like keyboard shortcuts and I don't wanna use keyboard shortcuts. I wanna control it with the actual, I don't want shortcuts, I want the actual commands so that we can control it and using variables and using the Sim Connect stuff. This is where you come. And so it does have RXP GPS master devices. There is a way to do a GPS master next device. So the custom Sim variables, this is where we find the information for the custom SIM variables. And this becomes very helpful. You have encoded for device IDs, right? Four characters encoded. You have your control variables. So this is if you want to break the devices up. So now we get to the custom GPS commands. Standard GPS messages uh, that are built in. So if I was making this using the kind of button controller that it is, and it was a number one, it'd be real easy to program because you just go in and you could press the buttons with the commands in the flight sim open. But because we want to control the number two, the flight sim button mapping doesn't understand the concept of bits and what we're going to do with the bits. That's why I needed an extra bump 
from the developer to kind of nudge me a little bit so I understood what I was looking at. So all this information exists and all these commands are available to you. But the key is when we're trying to use the number two GPS, we will have to use these bits or these bit flags to represent the same command, but adding extra data. With the other guys, it's just like a zero and life is easy. This is the part of the manual that's very important. There's like three entries for examples. Now I understand and now I can go ahead and modify these events. So we're gonna cover the programming in a separate tutorial, but I just wanna point out everything that I needed to figure this, this stuff out for bezel sizes, the right unit, I did find in the manual. The control aspect was a little bit more difficult because it was such a small section and my head didn't wrap around it. I asked a question. He basically gave me the similar information that you get from this, but he worded it differently. And just the way he shaped it, it helped me grasp what it was that he was trying to tell me to look at and what part of the manual to pay, I guess, better attention to or to better understand what I was supposed to be looking at. Once we did that, we were good up and running. So let's go ahead and we better get this thing started before we run out of battery. So we're just gonna go ahead, get it started, put our parking brake on. We're in full screen mode. If we go into views and I undock that view, I kinda have this problem uh, yeah, I can grab it and move it, but I'm not going to be able to size it or do anything with the edges. So this is where the help of being able to go out of full screen mode, then drag it in. So now, of course, it still benefits the 530. I could have right clicked on it when we were in full screen mode and undocked it and dragged it off and it would have worked great. But then I got to do all the sizing by grabbing the corners. So if you still do the same method and undock it this way, now you've got the window bar, which helps. So we drag it down here onto the screen and now we've got the little box to go ahead and make it full screen and fill it in automatically. Now we come back to the SIM, go ahead and hit Alt Enter and it's gonna nicely take care of that for us. We don't really have to worry about it. Now we've got our GPS is shift click. So now we can see, hey, look, 532 connect let's make this the master device it does know that it's nav2 com2 nav2 knows all that so life is great everything is wonderful advanced settings yay if you enjoyed the video hit that like button subscribe if you haven't and come along with us on the next one when we fly the gns 530 from reality xp